friends, welcome back. So December has been quite the month, I have to say. So this month we moved, shortly after we moved, we found out that my husband had COVID. So that was super stressful. Thankfully he has fully recovered and somehow, even though I've been you know, with him this whole time, but prior to him being diagnosed, I did not catch it myself. So, you know, I got really lucky with with that. Um, I was tested many, many times and I never contracted it. So, you know, that's good news and thankfully he is doing better. But all that to say, this has been a bit of a stressful month for me. So I've not been the best at getting books finished or getting really much of anything done in terms of video making. However, I did read some good books this month that I want to share with you. So let's dive in, shall we? So the first book that I finished this month, if I can pull up my list of books that I finished. So Okay, so the first book that I finished is a nonfiction book that I found from Kayla on Books and Lala's channel. And she uh, recommended this book called Disfigured on Fairy Tales, Disability and Making Space. And this book I thought was quite good. I hadn't read any books that were quite like this. It's written by a woman who has cerebral palsy, I believe. And she talked about her experiences with disability as well as how characters with different disabilities are portrayed in in stories and fairy tales. And I thought what was really interesting about this book is it really it kind of opened my eyes to different ways that we think about disability and different schools of thought when it comes to talking about disability or thinking about disability. So on one hand, there's kind of a school of thought that disability is really something that has to be overcome by the person with that disability. And it's kind of on them to navigate the world. And then, and I'm paraphrasing, this is like, an oversimplification, but there's another kind of school of thought that says it's really more of society's burden to carry, to take care of people with disabilities and make life more accessible to them. So I thought this book was really interesting. It definitely opened my eyes and opened my perspectives to a lot of things. My only kind of negative thing about it, so there are two things that kind of dropped this book from a five star to four stars for me. I think the biggest thing is it felt a little bit scattered and I feel like it I don't know, like I feel like it didn't touch enough on the fairy tale aspect. So part of the title does say that it talks about fairy tales. However, I watched out this book and I was like, I don't really, like, I, it's hard for me to even remember specific examples of fairy tales that she talked about. Like I feel like she could have gone more in depth talking about the fairy tale side of things. It just ended up being a little bit more of like a scattered and somewhat repetitive like memoir more so than a real critique of fairy tales in my opinion. And then the other thing that bugged me about this book, which I know is a bit more of a nitpicky detail, but she full on like no spoiler alert, just spoils the end of Game of Thrones like multiple times. Um, I was like, what's up with that? Like, was that really necessary? It's like you could have at least put a spoiler alert before you gave like a play by play of the ending scene. Anyways, moving on. So the next book I read is Barack Obama's new book, which is A Promised Land. And this book, it's a hefty book, okay? It is quite a big chunker of a book. It is, I listened to the audiobook, which I would recommend because um, Barack Obama does narrate it himself, but the audiobook is 29 hours. So, you know, basically this book is pretty much exactly what I thought it was going to be. It is a play-by-play -play of his presidency. So this book touches briefly on Barack Obama's earlier life and kind of his childhood, his early career, but it really kind of picks up speed when it's talking about his campaign for presidency. And the book is really just focused on his time as president. So if you are looking for something that is really an in-depth, deep dive of his earlier life, this is not the book for you. Also, if you want to learn about like what he's been up to since being president, if you want him to critique Trump's presidency and talk about what he thinks about it, it does not talk at all, at all about his time after the presidency. Basically the ending chapters is when, um, is the killing of Osama bin Laden and kind of that whole thing. Good evening. Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world. The United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda. But it does not talk about really anything after that. So, you know, keep that in mind if that is what you're looking for. 
you're not going to get that. Each chapter basically is like a different major issue. So like the Affordable Care Act, um, it talks about the economy, it talks about his campaign, all of that stuff. I thought this book was really solid. I would definitely recommend it, especially as Joe Biden is preparing to become president. I think this book is, it's a really good time to read this book just because obviously Joe Biden was Barack Obama's vice president. So he was, you know, in the room when a lot of this stuff was happening. So it kind of just gave me some more perspective on Joe Biden's past and like his experience in office. It doesn't really talk a lot about him specifically, but obviously he was there for, you know, that time. The only thing, okay, I should have seen this coming, but the only reason I didn't give it five stars is, okay, when you're talking about policy issues that are, like 10 years old. It's it's a lot to listen to policy talk for 29 hours. Okay, like, okay, I did listen to the audio on double speed, but even still, like 14 and a half hours of talking about policy can get like a little bit boring. There were some parts of it where I was like, okay, like I get it, let's just move through this. But that's just my own perspective. Like, I feel like I didn't necessarily get as much like excitement or enjoyment out of it as maybe I could have if it was maybe just a little bit shortened. Also, I know this is my own, like, this is just my own personal thing, but the fact that all of these events that he's talking about are so public, like, there's no real surprises. There's nothing really that, like, shocking because all the stuff you kind of see coming. You know what I mean? Now, all that being said, I would still definitely recommend it. I gave it four stars. Um, however, I do have to say I did prefer Becoming from Michelle Obama versus this book. Just feel like it gets a lot more personal into their relationship, into like personal things they've gone through versus so much like public policy type of stuff. But that's just me. Anyways, moving on. I've already talked too much about these first two books. The final book that I read is one of my, probably one of my favorite books that I've read all this year and this is a five-star book this is cast by isabel wilkerson um this book is okay so let me back up for a second so this year i have read a handful of different books on race race issues anti-racism all of those kind of topics but this book really stood out to me as something completely just on a different playing field like it was just so distinctive from all of those other books and let me kind of tell you about it shall we before I get too out of myself so prior to reading this book I I definitely knew about racism race issues I fully believed in systemic racism in the United States but even kind of with that mindset I had never thought about race in the way that this author kind of lays out race issues in the United States. So basically she makes this this argument that race in the United States, it's not just a matter of prejudice, it's not just a matter, matter of racism or our past in slavery, but it is something much more embedded than that, that there truly is a caste system in the United States. And in this book, she compares the caste system that she describes in America to the caste system of India, which is before reading this book, this was that was the only real caste system that I'd ever really heard of. And then she also compares it to what she says was a caste system in Nazi Germany. And after reading this book, I completely agree with her. I'm like, wow, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like prior to that, as I said, like I had only really thought of caste as something that was like a foreign concept. Like I knew India had a caste, but I never really thought about something that as something that applied here in America. But after reading it, I was like, yeah, that makes a ton of sense. It talks about her personal experience, but it's not necessarily as much about that. It's more about like the overarching concept of caste and how that applies to America. And I think some things that really stood out to me in this book that were really troubling, honestly, is I learned that I that I did never really knew about um, was the fact that the Nazis in Nazi Germany actually were inspired a lot in what they were doing in terms of um, discriminating and separating different groups of people. They were actually inspired by the Jim Crow laws in the United States, which is terrifying and I think shameful for our American history. And it's just, I don't know, I never knew about that. And I learned a lot more about that and many other things in this book. So it is a, it is a longer book, but I would very 
very highly recommend it. Now this was the last book that I finished this year and I definitely think it was a good way to end the year with something that was really meaningful and fascinating and just a very well written excellent book. So definitely would recommend it. And yeah, those were the three books that I finished. Now if you want to hear my wrap up of the whole year 2020, my favorite books, my least favorite books, um, all of that good wrap up stuff, then definitely subscribe because I will be posting those videos hopefully in early January. We'll see um, how fast I can get those out. But yeah, I would love to have you around for that. And until next time, guys, bye.